Alright guys, so I want to give you a quick update on the Gatling Boomer Grenade Launcher Noob to build. Um, <laughs> pretty much uh, the best, probably the best build in the game at this moment, which is likely to get a nerf. Um, I, I will say Havoc Orb is probably the most broken skill right now. So, Havoc Orb with Disintegrating Payload, very powerful. And we'll go over some gameplay right away, and then I will show you um, exactly what it's all about. So basically, you spam have a corp and you deal big damage. Do you get your rage back with Aether Jump. Pretty much everything dies very easily. And uh, yeah, that's about the build. So let's go back to town and uh, I'll go over all my skills, my gear, my passive tree, everything. So first of all, the skills. We got Aether Jump. This are, these are the modifiers, most important one. Uh, this one applies applies uh, Aether Ailment to enemies nearby and uh, March of Time Devours, which will uh, remove the cooldown and allow you to spam it to get a lot of rage quickly. So when I spam Aether Jump, my rage goes back to full. Blood for Blood. Basically, really, really fun when you get this buff. So for every enemy that dies within your area of effect, you get a, a, an attack speed and spellcasting speed boost. So... You can basically go up to cap, which is 400%. Um, this might be a broken node. This might be a broken uh, a broken active skill modifier. I, I don't know yet. Um, but currently, very, very powerful. So that's pretty much blood for blood. These are the modifiers. Lightbringer, it's, it's a movement skill. It applies weakness with sudden dehydration. It stun bosses with sunstruck. So this will, um, this will break the break bar of any mob pretty much instantly. It's, it, it removes like 95% and then you just make do an attack and you'll be uh, able to break his bar. He will go into stun and he will take more damage. So, Lightbringer, you also get more all res per enemy hit. So, it's tanky, movement, um, it's another stack of weakness and it stuns. So, really, really good. Mark of Impurity, there are a couple of setups you could go for this. Uh, basically, this enhances your damage uh, tremendously. It used to be, in the previous patch, 20% and 10% per extra active skill modifier that you choose. I did not test these in this patch yet, but um, you, you, you cannot really go wrong. You go for these two for sure, because this will make the enemy explode, and this will make uh, anyone that dies, it will, will spread the mark. So, these two are mandatory. And then you could go like this, you could go like this. Um, it really it really depends uh, on, on some more... We need to do some more testing for this. But you can't really go wrong. It increases your damage. So cast this on, let's say for example, one trash mob. Make them explode. It will do a chain reaction. If you have enough damage, uh, it will kill them all. On bosses, it increases your damage. It, it has been nerfed. It has been nerfed. So it now scales with the, with your weapon damage instead of with the mob's health, but um, I believe it is still very very powerful, and uh, that is what makes the trial belt the best belt in the game. It is still the best belt in the game. Warpath basically just to go fast. Um, I just get the speed, and Warpath's keybind can be held down to increase its duration. This is the most important one. So basically, as long as you as you hold it, you you will warpath. And then the main skill, Havoc Orb. So what is so good about Havoc Orb? Getting more projectiles and getting AoE on it. Getting bigger AoE as well. So it's self-explanatory. Um, you got you got a big grenade launcher and you use it and you deal damage. So that is pretty much it for the active skills. There are other skills that you could use. So this is like the, the build I'm using right now. If you're too squishy, you could go for Livor Mortis with uh, this node. No. This note, Liver Mortis summons receive a portion of damage dealt to you. You can even double this up. You can duplicate it uh, if you want to be even more tanky. Um, there are mo mo multiple other skills that you could use. Uh, it's up to you, but this is the current build that I use. In terms of stats, I have about 30,000 life. 30,000 is about a sweet spot where I want to be. Uh, I feel pretty tanky this way, and uh, I, I dump the rest into Ferocity. Okay, the passive tree. This is subject to to change. S some of the big, some of the best nodes, um, Archon's teachings, another projectile, academic fieldwork. This one is a real good one. 
Uh, probably the best node they changed. I haven't tested them all, but just by looking at them, you get 50% material damage each time you kill a champion or a boss. Stacks up to 5 stacks, so that's 250. And each time you get a stack, it refreshes the whole stack. Except when you're at, you're at 5 stacks. So, very, very good. I would probably so if you're leveling up, I would probably go Archon's teachings, um, Archon's teachings, Academic Fieldwork, Immortal Offerings, Grievous Afflictions, and Undertaker. And after that, you can go for whatever you want. Um, so basically, th this is a passive tree. So this is damage. This is damage. This is also damage. This is damage reduction, branded burst. So for every tenant point, you get 20% 20, uh, 20 damage reduction because of this node past it, which increases by 5. So when you have all of your tenant points, you take 0 damage for one attack. So as, as you lose points, you take more and more damage. This is good for squishy builds. You invest this, and you're pretty much good, good to go. Um, this is also damage reduction. I am not sure I'm going to keep this. We'll see. Uh, I'd have to try without it, but it is very good damage mitigation. Captured, ve captured Velocity and uh, f Flurrying Flames, it's just for attack speed, it's just for quality of life. The more attack speed you have, the faster your animations. I am not really lacking damage, so that is why I am trying these out. They are absolutely not mandatory, and if, if, if you want to use something else, please do. Um, residual Energy is just a buff, so when you use Residual Energy, your attacks will gain your attacks will gain additional damage as a damage type of the last spell cast. So take for example, I cast Aether Jump, so which is Aether damage. I get a shit ton of Aether, Aether damage here. So if, if I use... Okay. I messed that up. But anyways, you guys saw that. As soon as I used um, Aether Jump, I got a lot of Aether damage on my Havoc Orb here. So this is the same as the same bonus that you can get on Rings as well. And you can get on the Max 15 Enerac, which I do not have right now. Um, these nodes are for Max Willpower and Rage. Um, Immortal Offering, still good. It's been nerfed by more than, like, it's been nerfed by a lot, but it is still good to, to take. It's still multiplicative damage. Um, Undertaker, the Green Globes, very powerful if you're going fast. As you kill mobs, you will gather Poison Globes, Green Globes, with this node, which increases to plus 15 to your radius. So you will pick up everything on the screen, and each globe gives you 30% multiplicative damage bonus. Very, very good. When you have enough transfer time and rage and willpower, you grab this one, Frenzied Blows. Skills, skills have double the cost of the rage, but also deal double damage. So as long as you have really good transfer time, uh, you'll be able to keep up with above 750 rage. To be completely honest, I don't always keep up 7, 750 rage. Um, this just does so much damage, especially when you got your buff of for blood for blood, and you're just using the Gatling gun grenade. Um, you won't need you won't need uh, 750 rage plus, but it's always a nice it's always nice to have double damage when you're above 750. So 1% damage per 100 rage point. This is just to go um, 35 rage gen re regeneration on kill. This is this can be good, and it, it's. Uh, it's a matter of preference. So for speeds, I don't really use it because if I kill stuff too fast and I want to teleport away, um, if I kill too many things, it will just transfer all my willpower into rage right away. So I won't have enough uh, willpower to aether jump away. So if, if you want more rage, take it. If you want more willpower to teleport away, remove it. This is life leech. Just uh, if you have life leech anywhere else, you won't need this one. So, um, you won't need probably these. I'm just grabbing this one for movement speed. So, most important ones, guys. Archon's Teachings, Academic Fieldwork. This is a little bit more damage if you want. Blessed Silver. I haven't tried it this patch, though. So, I, I haven't really uh, looked into it deeply. But, uh, I used to grab it. I'm still grabbing it for now. I'll do some more testing once I reach level 90. Um, branded Burst, very important. Max Willpower and Rage here, Undertaker, the node for the Radius, Immortal Offerings and Grievous Afflictions, and uh, Frenzied Blows. So, Flurring Flames and Captured Velocity, not needed. This one, not needed if you have Life Leech anywhere else. All these small nodes either. This one is a matter of preference. 
And uh, keep in mind that this is like still a work in progress. I'm just leveling up right now. So that's it for the passive tree. We'll go over the, uh, the gear now. So this is a material build, especially because of academic field work, which is so good. So material build, you want material damage, toxic, rend, or physical flat damage on it. And um, basically anything that can help you that you find when you're starting out. So this is not optimal gear. This is still trying to get to optimal gear. Um, so transfer time is there to help with, with, obviously we need transfer time pretty much everywhere. And rage and willpower cost reduction. It's the base of the build. This will make your build tick. So material damage everywhere else. So you want material damage pretty much everywhere else to get more damage. If you feel like you're uh, needing some tankiness, get some health, get some all res, get anything that can improve your uh, your tankiness. But if you need more damage, go for material damage, main stat as in agility, ferocity, stuff like that. Uh, obviously, ferocity is better because you'll get more crit chance. But any main stat will increase your attributes bonus damage, and this is not negligible, guys. So basically, I'll go over my gear really quickly. Material damage, rage and power cost, rage and power cost, material damage. You can get some serial affixes with damage per 100%, uh, damage per uh, 100 remaining rage point. You got material damage as well here. You see that this, this one is just pure damage, actually. You might want transfer time on your helm, chest, pants, socketed in your ring, belt, amulet, on your catalyst. So plus transfer time is good, minus transfer time is bad. So you want to get as close to minus 50% on your catalyst. If not, you could get a um, you could get a max in Enerac or possibly another, possibly even another catalyst. The one with the 10% uh, damage multiplier for material damage might be okay. Um, it's it's all it all depends on what you have access to. All right. But I'm trying to get as much transfer time as possible for the build to be smooth. And uh, if I feel like I'm needing damage, I will switch one piece of gear for something else that has more damage. So basically, that is it, guys. I'll show you every item I have. So I will have a more in-depth stat priority guide soon. But for now, this is pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video.